Hey gamers, if you like tile laying and think you have what it takes to build the best city the world has ever seen, then you might want to check out World Wonders. Let's take a look at how this game plays. In this game, players are trying to buy various types of buildings and other tiles and things like that to put on their board and try and earn the most points. At the beginning of every round, players will get $7, which they can spend on any of the things that are available, and the round for them will end whenever they run out of money. They can buy roads, which must be placed next to other roads or next to their sidewalk, so they might put a road here. They can buy the first or second player marker so that they can determine their turn order for the next round. They can buy towers, which can go next to anything that has been previously placed on their board, so it can help them to expand um, roads or other things if they get blocked off. They can buy buildings, which will cost whatever the price is on the back of the buildings, and buildings can be placed next to roads or next to other buildings of the same color. When players buy buildings, they will also earn various resources, which they'll track on their personal track here. And any time that they pass population markers, they will also get the appropriate population, which can get them some points at the end of the game as well. The other thing that players can buy is monuments. And the monuments are going to score them some points, but also eat up the rest of their money. So you can buy a monument early in the round to guarantee that you get a specific one, but there is some balance in that in deciding if you want to hold off maybe until you only have $1, get a cheap monument, but you might miss out on the one that you actually want. Like the other things that we've already seen, the monuments also have various restrictions for where they can be placed. So these, this one has to be placed on two land spaces and must be placed next to a road and next to a a white building, which there were no white buildings out, so you wouldn't probably be able to play this one this round. Again, players are out of the round once they have spent all their money, and then they will reset their money and everything for the next round so they can buy more things. New buildings will come out, um, and the monuments always refill automatically so that there are always three available, at least until the deck runs out. Players can also take out loans for an extra $2, which will be paid back at $3, or lose the player two points if they never are able to pay back that loan. Players can also add in public objective cards for a few extra point possibilities, um, which will just score at the end of the game as well. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins, with ties going to the player with the most monuments. This game fell at a little middle of the road for me. I liked the overall flow of the game. I thought that turns were really smooth and it was a little bit of an interesting puzzle to try and place out your buildings and try and make sure that you're reaching the requirements to get some of those wonders on your board. But after a couple of plays, I thought that it kind of just felt very samey play, play to play. Um, I didn't think that there was a lot of room for new strategies or new things to try after multiple plays. So that's why it's kind of hitting middle of the road for me. It's a fine game. It has excellent production quality. I love uh, playing with all the little uh, monuments and getting those out on my board. I really strive to get them just because they are so cool looking to put on my personal player board. Um, but I did think that that was a little bit of why it felt a little flat for me. But if you like tile laying and trying to puzzle out the best placement for things, um, then it's definitely something that you'll want to check out. You can look at my blog to see my full thoughts and check out if this one is for you.